Welcome to MedTech Monday, Dan. Thank you. Always a pleasure to be here. I see a lot of familiar faces, and I'm always excited to be here because the medical technology market is an exciting one, is it not? Yes. Uh, it stays the same, pretty dull. Yeah? No. It's one of the most dynamic markets in the world, and it is really a worldwide market because everything you're doing here, they're doing in countries all around the world. Uh, medical technology is very exciting, and I'm uh, very excited to be part of it. So today what I want to talk about, as Dan said briefly, are mistakes. Because usually I'm talking about licensing from the standpoint of what you do and how you do it. But there are actually a lot of mistakes. And you'll see that some of these actually overlay, for example, what Luis was talking about. Because it is intertwined. One thing to keep in mind, licensing should be part of your business strategy. should be part of your marketing strategy. And how many of you are familiar with licensing? Okay, how many are not? Okay. Well, basically, if you have an intellectual property, which just about all med tech technology is, you can use licensing as a way to find a partner who can take it out into the market for you, sometimes faster and cheaper than you can by yourself. So what we're going to cover today are what I find three of the top mistakes, and those are the lack of focus, developing it for yourself, and not validating the technology. I'm going to take you through each of these points because they really are something that have... Um, cause a lot of companies to come to a standstill in the market, not only from a licensing perspective, but also you may encounter these from your own um, efforts as you're bringing your device forward in the market. So let me give you just a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I'm, uh, my company's licensed consulting group with a, work with a lot of medical device technologies. I actually got my start in the entertainment business. Uh, that was back in the days of uh, the first Batman movies, Looney Tunes, Power Rangers. How many of you have kids? Yeah, does this any sound any familiar to you? Did you buy any of those products for your kids? A lot of them? Yes. Thank you for supporting my lifestyle. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Wasn't my lifestyle. And back then, uh, licensing was not uh, really what you would call sophisticated business for the studios. It was more of an afterthought. And in the time I was there, it was for the first Batman movie, and the directive was, here's a phone, go out and find some companies to take this and uh, make some products and hopefully pay us some money because they didn't know if it would be success. So fast forward, of course, that's all changed. So my company focuses on strategy, consulting, licensing out predominantly, and figuring out how to uh, partner up companies with your technology. Some of the technologies I work on and clients I have, uh, blue light technology for oral health care that gets integrated in toothbrushes. Back when I was licensing the studios, I did toothbrush deals, but that was to put Bugs Bunny on the toothbrush and have the kids brush their teeth. Today, it's a little more sophisticated. Now it's using blue light to actually reverse periodontal disease. Um, surgical devices, uh, orthopedic devices, things of that nature. There's a lot of different technologies out there. Companies I work with are, are looking to find partners to take those technologies to the marketplace. Am I not doing something here? OK. All right, so the first thing that you need to understand about licensing and about your technologies are the big guys are interested in partnering with you. In fact, they're backing out of the R&D business. According to Forbes, over 80% of the companies today are looking to form strategic alliances through partnerships with small startups and emerging growth companies to develop their technologies. Why? These companies are, have realized now they're too big, too bureaucratic, and not fast enough to develop new products, and they can't develop them fast enough to get into their pipeline. The market's moving that quick. They also recognize that the competition coming into this market is no longer about medical device companies. It's about uh, tech, big technology companies such as Apple and Microsoft, huge consumer electronics companies such as Toshiba, Hewlett Packard and others, giant retailers such as CVS and Walgreens, they're all rapidly moving into this market. And the reason is because everybody sees where it's going. It's going toward direct consumer to provider, and somebody's got to be there to provide it with the devices, the data, and everything else that goes along with it. So keep this point in mind that they do want your technology. But here's the first issue, and that is the lack of market focus. How many have a device that say, this is going to solve problems in the healthcare industry, right? Or all the patients are going to like it, or this is going to solve all the payers' problems. Well, that's really not what your device or technology is going to do. 
What it has to be is it has to be a focus, and I find this often is that one of the stumbling blocks to licensing is there's a lack of focus. It's a huge healthcare market, but inside that healthcare market, you've got a variety of customers. They're broken down into three general categories of patients, payers, and providers. But inside those, there's also market segments. And on the device side, the technology side, you've got devices, equipment, testing, formulations, and inside those are submarkets. And the idea here is that if you don't focus your technology, it makes it hard for anybody to understand what it's going to do or what the benefits are. And that's why it's important you have to really take a look and understand the healthcare market is really a set of niche markets. And I'm not talking about small niche markets. These are big niche markets. But if you don't understand which of these markets your technology addresses, you can be very frustrated in forming relationships with companies because they're addressing these markets. And no technology is going to be suitable for every market. It just doesn't exist. But you may have a technology that is applicable to several markets. But you have to focus it on those markets and explain why. Explain the benefits. Explain how you solve the problem. For example, you've got the rehab market, which may be made, made, is made up of clinics and physical therapy clinics. Again, two subsectors that are different. How do, you, how do you benefit them? Why would a company be interested in working with you to reach those markets? Or medical offices and hospitals. Again, different markets. How do you fit those? And seniors, assisted living, in-home care, both of these are different. It's not just the senior market. When I go out to license a technology, if a company is working with assisted living facilities, you've got to, to uh, document or prove to them why you have a valuable technology that their customers, their assisted living facilities would want to buy. Because if you don't address those markets, it makes it very difficult for them to have to figure out. See, the more you leave for others to try to figure out, the harder it is to sell them on. Isn't that true when you go to customers? If they can't figure out what the benefits are, how are they going to buy it? And that impacts your licensing as well. When you figure out your markets, and this is one of the things that I do with a client, there's more than one way to license your technology. Okay? There's more than one way to give an exclusive. You don't want to give away everything to one company because no one company today addresses all the markets, customers, applications, and channels. And there's many ways to do it. In one case, I was working with a client. We had a very large pharmaceutical company, and they came to us. They wanted an exclusive, but they told us they were only going to start in one market, two markets, Germany and the UK. Well, that was great. We would give them exclusive for those markets, but they wouldn't get exclusive anywhere else. They would have to earn it. But that would leave the opportunity open to then license other companies exclusively in other territories. That's just a quick story to show you why it's important to understand the focus of your technology. The better you focus it, the more valuable it's going to be to somebody and the more opportunities you're going to discover with it. The second problem or challenge is I made it myself. Who here is an inventor? You like to invent. You made it yourself. You invented it from scratch, but here are some of the challenges. You wind up after creating it, depending on how you make it, it's difficult to manufacture and expensive to source. See this all the time. Came up with great looking uh, face, nice buttons, it's really cool, new tooling, spent 250,000 on the tooling, looks great, take it out to the market, but then when you present it to a manufacturer, they look at it, and what's one of the first questions they ask you? How much does this cost to make? Where do you get the components? Then you proceed to tell them how, well, for $250,000 you can make this great tooling here, and then I went over to this company and I got them to specially make the components for this, and by that time the, the manufacturing engineer is looking at you going, no, I don't think so. Why? The answer is because it's not worth the risk. You're in a market that's moving very fast. Your technology is not going to last as long as you think it's going to last. Okay, these things are moving quickly. You maybe has an economic lifespan of three years, if that. Because there's so much new technology moving into the market. It's changing. You heard Luis talk about the regulations. What's approved today maybe isn't approved tomorrow. That's why it's very important that when you develop your technology, don't develop it for yourself, develop it for the market. 
Think about what's the fastest way they can get into the market. Because at the end of the day, your partner wants you to do one thing, and that is show them the money. They're not in this for charity work. Some are. But at the end of the day, they want to know how to make money. And the more that you can design your product to make it easy and effective for them to get it into the market, the more you can design it to lower the risk. You heard Luis talk about risk. That's one of the things that you have to think about. Many companies don't, is what's the risk? And if you make it complex, if you make it customized, if you invent it for yourself and build it from scratch and then tell them, well, here's how you make it and they have to reinvent the wheel, that's risk. They can't afford that and they don't have the time to do that. Simple, simple, simply in licensing, you get paid a lot higher the royalties. If you've got big markets, you're ready to go and you've got high profit margins or lower costs. Vice versa, you'll get low royalties if you've still got a lot of development and there's a lot of unknowns. And then finally, the third point, and this is an important point, is no market validation. You spend all your money on R&D, you spend all your money on production, you spend all your money on building an organization with lots of people, but you don't spend any money to find out if the market even wants it or buys it. And if the market isn't going to want it or buy it, what are you going to do with it? Or that it even works? Had a technology once at the University of Arkansas, and it was a cooking process technology the university invented it was great. It reduced um, fat content in fried food by 60%. Finally got through to the um, food manufacturing, food production companies. By the way, it wasn't the fast food companies that would take it. You think they would? They don't do their own innovation anymore. They hand it off to the big food production. Dow, Cargill, Simmons. Got them there. They loved it. And uh, one of the largest came in, tested it, and then they asked a simple question. You know what that question was? Well, have you ever tested this with any fast food restaurant? How does it hold up under the red lights? What do the customers think? They didn't know. And finally, that's why you need to test it and make sure it works so that they buy it. Test markets, testimonials, anything like that. Because the right time to license is when you've reached that point, then you could move into the licensing arena. That's when you've removed the risk and that's when companies are interested in licensing your technology. So wrapping it up, avoiding the mistakes, one, focus on the niche markets, two, show them the money, and three, prove it works. So that's it. If you'd like some more information, I'll be downstairs in a workshop later on this morning. We can come down there. We can have a longer session. In the meantime, there's my contact information. I put out a newsletter that comes out every week, gives you tips, tactics, things like that, my latest news articles. So go to my website and sign up. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.